Guys, how you doing? My name is Tommy and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue. And finally, it is summertime in the Garden State. And on today's show, it's poor man's burnt end. And it's happening now. Alright everybody, my name is Tommy and this is the Gallery Backyard Barbecue and look, we got a long one for you today, over 20 minutes, sit back, relax and uh, definitely check it out, right? Listen, hit that subscribe button, ring that bell so you get uh, notified on uh, all of my uh, future uploads. It is greatly appreciated. And look, leave a comment down below. I love to uh, read those and answer those and enjoy the show. All righty, so look, let's take, a, uh, let's take a look at what we're looking at. So look, anytime you're uh, shopping for uh, beef chuck, what you want is you want all this uh, marbling in here, right? You want to see some uh, fat in here that's going to render down. There's really not much, uh, you're, you're really not going to trim anything. I mean, if you wanted to get technical, you could probably take a little of this off. All right, and, and really that's about it. And look, when I'm doing uh, uh, burnt ends with a uh, beef chuck. Uh, the thicker, the better. Okay, so this is only a uh, two and a half pounder, but it's thick. A lot of times you'll find a, uh, you know, a lot of times you're going to find a three, three and a half, four pounder that's going to be bigger in size, but thinner in girth, right? So, so uh, to me, I'd rather uh, a thicker piece. So when I cube it up into my uh, uh, burnt ends. I'm gonna have a thicker piece than a uh, thinner piece, right? So look, what I like to do here is I like Alrighty, to, so look, what I like to do when I'm working with a uh, with a uh, poor man's burnt end or a, a chuck roast is I like to build flavors, right? So I like to apply uh, different flavors of heat and really build like a uh, nice coating of uh, uh, flavor on the meat, right? So what I'm gonna go with is a little heat from Daddy Dutch Barbecue. This is uh, some sweet heat, right? So that'll give me a little uh, spice, right? A little bite. Also, I got some uh, salt, pepper, and garlic, right? This is my own mixture. You can uh, look down in the description and uh, there's some links to purchase uh, big bags of pepper and so forth. And that's my dog Molly hitting the uh, camera, of course. And uh, you know, you can look, you could start making your uh, basic salt, pepper, and garlic yourself. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some uh, killer hogs. This has a, a nice texture, a nice flavor uh, that I think will go well with this, uh, this dish. All right, so let's uh, build a, a flavor profile. And the first thing I'm gonna do here, and you always wanna kinda mix up your rubs, right? I'm just gonna add a little of a Daddy Dutch's a sweet heat. And you can see this has a nice coarse seasonings inside, which uh, I definitely like. And you can just kind of pat it in, no need for a binder. And we'll put some on the sides like that and we'll get those, uh, we'll dip those sides in there, right? See that nice uh, fat that this will render. This is going to be a nice one. This is going to be good. All right, and like I said, take your sides and just kind of uh, dip them in. All right. You see a little spot, you see it already going into the meat. I'm gonna hit it with a little more. That's all. All right, look, the next uh, flavor profile on this is just a, uh, like I said, a basic salt, pepper, and garlic, coarse in texture, and uh, you can uh, start making this yourself. Very easy to make. That way you can control the uh, spices that you like. Okay, and also for the edges. And if you don't want to tilt it on the board or maybe you're working inside the house, then of course you can uh, tilt the meat up and apply your uh, side rub. 
And if you think you're uh, missing consistency, just give it a little shake, no big deal. You see, I got a lot of uh, coarse grain salt after I did that little shake, of course. And now for some of uh, Mr. Reed's uh, killer hogs. See, this is going to be a nice uh, with with uh, with the sweet heat with Kent's sweet heat uh, with some of uh, your Texas style salt, pepper, and garlic, and then Malcolm Reed's killer hogs is going to put a nice color on it and a, a nice a flavor profile. And if you've never done uh, poor man's uh, brisket either in burnt ends or just uh, sliced so you got to do it and I'll leave links up top on a uh, couple other poor man's uh, burnt ends and briskets that I've done I picked up this meat for about $13 and if you see any little openings like that sure put some stuff in there why not and just make sure if you think you've missed any spots. That's good. See you over at the cooker. All right, everybody, look, uh, uh, there's been a lot of talk on uh, Facebook uh, about the inaccuracy of the uh, built-in, master-built uh, temp gauge that's inside the pit. Uh, some say 50 degrees off. And I got my uh, trusty Weber iGrill 2 wired up inside. I'm set at 275 on the pit. And we're at 268 on the iGrill. I don't know if you can see that. And zone one is 275, if you can see that. Okay, and I did just have my uh, pit open so look I think I'm within probably five six seven degrees I've been watching it as I've been prepping this at chuck roast um, I know there's been talk of uh, like I said 50 degrees off uh, my best advice there is to uh, check your grill right and I'll be monitoring the inside temperature and bringing it up from time to time uh, maybe I'll do a separate video on it we'll see Alrighty, and like I said, there's my two uh, Weber iGrill 2s, and trust me, this thing is uh, pretty much spot on. I'm going to plop this right in the middle. And I'm going to monitor the uh, internal temperature of the meat. And if I didn't mention it, I'm going to run my grill, uh, probably going to start it at 275. If it looks like the bark is setting up too fast, then at that point I'll lower it down to 250. Anytime you're doing these poor man's burnt ends, you can go anywhere from two and a quarter to 275, depending on how much time you have. I'm hoping on a six hour cook and uh, we'll see. All right, so look, let's give a check. We are uh, two hours in, two hours in. Basically, what you want to do here is you want to just look up, make sure that you're not having any uh, any dry spots, any burning. You want to just look the meat over. You want to make sure that uh, that rub is setting up nicely. And also, you want to uh, uh, probably start spritzing it at the, this point, right? I'm using a straight apple juice on the uh, spritz as I... Uh, Check the bottom, make sure she's not burning, of course. Now, if you don't have apple juice, spray, uh, straight water is fine. And now I'm also monitoring my temperature. I got my pit at 275. You can see it's going at 287, 270, and the meat is already up to 161. And that's in uh, two hours. 
Now look, she'll start to uh, slow down. I am in hour three here. She'll start to slow down, right? You'll hit that 140, 150 fairly quick, but then the uh, meme will really start to slow down. And here again, I'm just checking for, uh, well, just seeing how it looks, right? Looks like we got a, a pretty a decent color. Got some moisture where that fat was, right? Remember that fat running through the uh, chuck? Well, that's where you could see that moisture just coming uh, out and up through the meat. You know, that's why you want to grab a uh, chuck. When you go buy one of these chucks, you want to, the more fat and marbling inside it, the better. It's all going to break down into uh, flavor. And here you could see, uh, that's my little hand gestures. We are in hour four. And here I'm going to get a uh, temperature a read. I always uh, check uh, reading and see we are probing very easily. We are at 174. I think she's uh, just about ready to uh, wrap. Now look, when you wrap, when you're in the stall, if your bark is not set up good enough, if you're not happy with the color of your uh, bark, let her run into the stall. Don't be so quick to pull it out. A lot of times uh, people pull the uh, meat off the uh, pit too fast and the uh, bark never really sets up and uh, the end result's not as good, right? So you want a uh, good looking bark before you pull it in the uh, stall. And that's a uh, pretty uh, nice bark to me, so we'll get that uh, wrapped up. All right, so look, uh, when you do a uh, these burnt ends, these uh, beef chuck burnt ends, you wanna wrap in butcher paper. If you don't have this 24 inch butcher paper down in the description, I have it down there where you can purchase it, right? I have a few things down there that I use on the show. I am spritzing it with that apple juice and I am gonna put a little bit more of Killer Hogs on it. I mean, this is some a pretty a good rub. That is a uh, that is a, a nice color. So basically, what you're going to do here is you're just going to wrap it up into that. Uh, that butcher paper and it's just gonna steam in there right it's gonna help break everything down you really don't want to use foil with this because you'll lose a lot of that bark okay so you really want to use this uh, paper Okay, so we're going to get that back on the grit on the uh, pit. We're going to hold that temp at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And now we're going to run it right up into the, uh, well, over 195 anyway. At that point, we'll uh, take it out and uh, cut it up and you'll see that in a bit. You can see we are 203 and uh, we're probing quite nicely so uh, let's get this out and let's get this uh, cut up. like a Christmas morning anytime you unwrap any type of meat like a, a brisket or a, a chuck right and that is looking mighty fine 
very happy with that. So I'm gonna get those juices, right? I'm gonna save those juices. Put those in that uh, tin that you'll see in a, uh, about 30 seconds or so. Now, uh, basically what we wanna do here is we wanna cut the slices at about an uh, inch or so and we wanna do it uh, evenly. Because when you put this in the tin, fix it up, you want the slices to be as even as possible. Now, of course, that's not going to be uh, perfect, but uh, you do the best you can do. That's all good. That's all good. Oh, and that's a meal right there, sliced uh, beef chuck. But uh, on this show, we're going to take it one step further. And you can see I got some... Uh, pretty uh, nice even slices. We are gonna render everything down inside that uh, tin with some, uh, with some other goodies. Like about a half a stick of butter. You can go a quarter to a half a stick depending on uh, how big your uh, beef chuck was. I'm gonna put a little bit more of that killer hogs in there. And of uh, course, you use your uh, favorite rub. You know, eighth of a cup of a brown sugar or so. Oh, man. And then you want to hit it with about a, a quarter, a cup or so of a BBQ sauce. I mean, that is a, that's a whole a lot of flavor right there. Oh yeah, this is a, a certainly a treat. A uh, summer time a treat, I should say. Give that a, a nice a mix up, of course, and then you wanna get yourself an aluminum foil and you wanna seal that sucker up. Can't forget the honey. Gotta have some honey. Honey is optional. If you want honey, add it. If not, uh, don't. I know a lot of people don't really like honey. Like I said, get it sealed up and uh, back on the pit. Now you're gonna run this anywhere from uh, 15, 20 minutes to uh, 40 minutes, right? It depends on how where your beef chuck was uh, when you uh, dressed it all up. Just, uh, you know, you wanna break it all down and render it so it just basically is smushy, right? It took me 40 minutes to get it that way. Again, so you, you know, run it 10, 15, and then check it. If it ain't ready, cover it back up and put it back in. And you know it's ready because when you push it with a spoon, it just crumbles apart which is basically what I'm doing there, is just checking it. You know, if you pull it too early, you're gonna miss the whole thing. You know, you have to render it down to where it basically just falls apart. And at this point, I know I got about another uh, fifth minutes left or so so you want to leave the uh, top tin foil off and just let it render and let it uh, kind of what's going to happen is it's all going to turn that uh, sugary brown in color right like it's uh, almost going to look like it's burnt okay so when you're almost done leave the uh, tin foil uh, off the top hit it with a little bit more BBQ sauce right just uh, close it up for about 15 or more minutes and that's going to uh, turn it into an amazing uh, color, trust me. And uh, there you go. And look at that, man. That is candy right there. That is BBQ candy. That is a, a treat. Oh man, you can see it just fall apart. Watch this. <laughs> yeah. Now I know it looks like a lot of things flying around on the screen, and that is the camera picking up stuff. Trust me, it's not as bad as it looks. 
and that is certainly as good as it looks. I know people will leave in the uh, comments about all the uh, stuff flying around. All right, look, before I take this back in live, I want to uh, thank everybody for checking out this video. It is greatly appreciated. I know this is a long one. This is kind of like a 101 how-to, but you follow these uh, directions, and I'll tell you what, you are going to be making a... Uh, certainly a treat don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, leave me a comment down below right i love reading and i do answer all the uh, comments of course all right everybody here we are eight hours later That's eight hours in the uh, pit, and I uh, rested them for about 15 minutes. Now to know, I wanna come around here so we get the shot. And basically it just kind of falls apart like that. Alrighty, look, let me get these on the board. I'm gonna do a, uh, I'm gonna do a quick taste a test. I'm gonna do a quick taste test and get these uh, in the house for uh, dinner time. They fall right apart, I mean. And that's what it's about there. Cheers. Guys, it's candy. I mean, look at this. Oh, man. I mean, <laughs> this is a must make. Period. I mean, these things came out perfect. It's uh, like I said, it, is it as good as a brisket burnt end? Probably not. But I'll tell you what, if a brisket burnt end is 100%, these are 97%. I mean, I picked up this mean, I think, for 13, 14 bucks. Look, so that's it for this one. Please leave a, a comment down below, like, and share the video. Ciao.